Hello, in this session, I will be covering a very important technique for mitigating overfitting, and this technique is called transfer learning. So, in this technique, we will be using some pre trained models which are already trained on massive data set, like say, for example, ImageNet data set, which contains millions of images. So, how we can utilize is pre-trained models on the uh, problems which we have in computer vision where data set is very limited so uh, in Kira's uh, uh, package in, uh, in Kira's if you go to the if you see the Kira's documentation just go to Kira's application you can see here the lot of models are already available pre-trained models are available you can directly use these models in situations where you have very less training data right so uh, i will be uh, uh, showing tra uh, transfer learning uh, technique on a very popular uh, dog versus cats problem problem data set this uh, problem was first uh, mentioned in the Kaggle uh, competitions. Originally, uh, in, if you see the Kaggle, uh, Kaggle website, here you can see that the training uh, archive there is only 25,000 images are already available. But we, because we want to show the technique uh, of, uh, of transfer learning, on very less data otherwise there is no point if we have a lot of images but we want to show this technique where we have very less data so we will not use all the 25,000 images we will only use 2,000 images for training and uh, 1,000 images for validation and similarly for testing so I, I will be showing you uh, in this uh, dog versus cats uh, example uh, by running some uh, you know, code uh, and for that I will be using the Google Colab and will be definitely using the GPUs which are freely available because otherwise the training will take a lot of time so I have already downloaded uh, the, uh, the 2000 images for training on my Google Drive and 1000 images uh, for validation and 1000 images for testing also okay so i'll start uh, with this uh, google collab notebook by showing the printing the values the environments which we are using like the python tensorflow and kiras right okay just execute uh, this these cells right okay just Okay, so it has printed the version of Python which I am using and the uh, TensorFlow version. Okay, it has version. Okay. Execute the uh, now because to access the uh, images on the Google Drive, we have to mount the uh, Google Drive also. So there are some steps which are involved first we have to import the drive and also uh, we have to mount uh, the drive since I have already mounted so it is giving this error drive already mounted right so I can directly okay uh, because this is already mounted so I can show you where uh, my data is residing on uh, Google Drive it is available in cats and dogs fall Folder. Let's execute this. Okay, so in this uh, particular folder contains three folders: test, train, and validation. This test folder contains 1,000 images of cats, and uh, sorry, uh, 500 images of uh, cats and 500 images of dogs. Training folder contains 1,000 images of each class, and validation contains 500 images of cats and dogs. Right okay this next step what i will be doing i will be importing the vgg 16 because there are a lot of pre-trained models available but i will be showing 
need uh, how you can use the VDE 16 the steps the basic philosophy is same for all the models so you have to first you have to import the particular model and again the whatever uh, modules of keras which are required like models layer optimizer and image data generator also so just execute this step now here i will be showing you like how we can uh, you know use that vdg16 model now I just uh, you know we show you documentation also okay in VGG16, this is the first parameter is the include top true or false. This is we can use. So in this we have you include top false because we don't want to use the uh, dense layers of the VGC16 because uh, VGG16 was originally uh, you know trained on ImageNet uh, you know uh, ImageNet uh, Images which are have like uh, this database will have 1000 classes, but since we are here dealing with only dog and cats, two classes, so we don't want uh, you know 1000 classes, uh, right? Dense layer which are used for that. So we will be putting our uh, we will be using our own dense layers on top of the convolution layers which are already trained on this basic database. Right, so that is the reason we are using include top and the false and weights for which weights we are using that is the image uh, database whatever weights are trained on the image uh, images and input shape which is basically uh, the uh, shape of the images which will be we will be providing in this case it is 150 by 150 pixels and uh, number of channels are three so just execute this statement okay so in the next step uh, basically what we have used we will be building a sequential model and in the first layer what we will be adding is the uh, the vgg16 what uh, which we have uh, used the vgg16 model this the convolutional base which we have created Convolution basis on these the only the uh, convolutional layers which will be using, right, and not the dense layer of the VGG16 model. So in this case, we just like we add different kind of layers. We can add also add the convolutional base also, right, for the of the pre-trained model. So in this is first we have added this uh, model dot that we have used in our convolutional base. Since the convolutional base uh, basically provides uh, the output dimensions will be will not be a 1D kind of uh, vector which a dense layer will exp expect. So that is the reason that in the next step we will be adding a flattening layer, flatter layer, right? And then we can add the dense layers also. And uh, dense layer with activation in first dense layer we will be using value and then. We have to use the sigmoid because there are only two classes, so we can use sigmoid. Okay, just put in the model summary also. Okay, so you can see it's a very big model, the number of parameters very high, and also after that, you know, uh, we are adding the dense layers after flattening, also, it's adding more than 2 million parameters. Okay. okay. Now, uh, basically, we have used the um, uh, convolutional base of VGG16, but when we are we will train this end to end, so we don't want this weights of uh, model or the VGG16 model to change. So in that case, so for that we have to freeze the convolution base weights, so it should not change, right? So let's see how what are the trainable weights before uh, doing this part convolution based uh, trainable parameter with, before setting this parameter to false. What are the values of trainable weights? Now you can see that before freezing the trainable weights are 30, 
Now, after we set the critical parameter of conversion case to false, let's see how these things changes. So now your trainable weights are four. Why four? Because we have two layers of density, two dense layer, and so in this there is a one main uh, weight vector, and second is a your bias vector. So that is equal to 2 into plus 2. So there are 4 the weight vectors which is shown. Trainable weights, right? Okay. Now in the next step, we are using the again, we are creating the instance of image data generator, which we have already covered in previous uh, you know, videos. And in this case, we will be doing horizontal flip and you know, other rotation, different rot image augmentation kind of uh, for image of augmentation we are defining yes. now in the second case we are uh, doing the same thing we are creating instance but for test parameter now in this case we will be uh, reading all the images which are available in the training folder and converting into uh, basically uh, size 150 by 150 because all should be this this is what we are expecting in this uh, uh, this is input shape which we are expecting so we have to make sure that all the images are of correct size and also uh, the labels which we want to generate is a binary that means only we have two classes so we, we will be using the binary uh, as a class mode so execute this step so it's showing 2000 images belonging to two classes because we have 1000 images for of cat and 1000 images of uh, dog in for in training uh, folders right in validation we have 1000 images with for two classes because 500 of trail cat and 500 for dog. Next step we are compiling and loss we will be using binary cross entropy and optimizer we are using RMS prop. Right? And this is the other step where we will be actually the uh, we will be training our model. In epochs which we are using is 30 right, for uh, training and 50 for validation. Okay, since we have uh, we are using GPU, so training will be very fast. But uh, okay, since we are at 30 epochs, so it will take around uh, roughly around 10. Uh, more than 10 minutes actually on GPU. You can say it's although it's very fast, right? So just wait for you know, 21 seconds for one epoch. So you can say that it will be like very fast. Here we need to uh, see that since we have 2000 images uh, in. Uh, training folder so we have to be careful while using the steps for repo plus steps for epoch uh, parameters now uh, we see that in while generating uh, images we have seen by size we have used 20 so we have to use 20 into we have to see that uh, how many steps in which we have to use for uh, utilizing all the 2000 images so that is we have to use 100 step because 100 into 20 is 2000 so we will be uh, uh, using the 100 we have to use 100 value here and uh, validation steps 50 why because we have 1000 images and dash size is 20 so 50 into 20 1000 so this values basically we have to use very carefully this values depends on the how much data we are having at our disposal right hmm. 
Yes, the training is about to complete here. here. And we can see that the validation accuracy is around 90%. So this is uh, actually is a good good value uh, considering the fact we are only uh, you have used 2000 images for training and not the original 25000 images of dogs and cats. So with 2000 images we have reached this much accuracy of validation, validation accuracy. So this is good uh, good value so we have achieved uh, uh, this much accuracy using the uh, transfer learning technique so here we have shown you how we can use the different models pre-trained models so in this case we we saw that how VGG 16 can be you know utilized similarly we in similar flow we can you know, use uh, with different other models also, also like uh, ResNet and other other models, right? So the basic, uh, you know, architecture how we have to go about adding the dense layers and freezing the, you know, earlier layers also. So that that will be the logic will be same because uh, you know uh, the earlier layers actually have a generic kind of feature uh, which uh, which are learned so we have to pre uh, use those layers and not the dense layer which are problem specific right so we have to use the dense layer for our uh, own related to the you know uh, classification problem we ha uh, we have in hand okay so we will see we saw that uh, we have achieved a very good validation accuracy of 90 percent with such a small data set and in the last step we, we are just uh, plotting the results where you can see that the validation accuracy is good and the losses are also going down so so this is very uh, you know, powerful technique of uh, uh, this transfer learning so when we have less data so that's it yeah, for this session if you uh, learn something and you find it useful then please like this video and also subscribe to my channel thank you